Have you been thinking about your gaming setup lately? Chances are that with gaming and streaming being as popular as it is right now and people going to unbelievable lengths to make their home office or home gaming setup look as outrageous and luxurious as possible, but the thought has come across to you that you might want to try your hand at it. So what happens when you decide to take that plunge? You decide, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my work area. I'm going to make my office or my streaming setup the most original, the coolest looking area. My friends are going to come over and love it, uh, but your computer doesn't quite fit in. So if you are somebody rocking an older computer and you want to upgrade its look, or you need a different case because you're planning on upgrades in the future and you're going to need more space, or you have too much space and you're trying to get a small case so that you can create a nice sleek design for your room, well then this is the video for you. And the best part about this whole process is that all you really need is a little time and a screwdriver. So most people have a Dell, a Lenovo, a Hewlett Packard, those type of computers, and you bought it from Best Buy five years ago, and it suited every purpose that you needed it to do. Uh, you probably overpaid for it because those computers are generally more expensive than what you could actually build if you were building a computer on your own. But you can still upgrade their look. For the purposes of this video, however, we're not going to be using a generic uh, Hewlett Packard or a Dell or anything like that. We, I do have a special case that I picked up it is probably the most horrendous case I've ever seen anyone use. It's huge, it's clunky, and I don't know why anyone would want this on their desk. Hold on, I'm gonna show it to you. It weighs like 60 pounds. And because that case does not at all fit the look we're going for, I got a new case. You're just gonna have it give me one second. So this case in this box is gonna do a much better job of fitting the look that most people go for when it comes to their gaming setup. So there is one more thing that I did wanna to touch on before I go ahead and open this box, and it's the power supplies inside of pre-built computers. So your Hewlett Packards, your Compacts, all the Dells, all those things, they come with a power supply, and a lot of times the cables to those power supplies are only long enough to fit that specific case. So if you try to transplant your power supply into a brand new case, especially one that's as large as this one, you're probably gonna run into issues with the power supply cables not being long enough to run to the entire system. So you won't be able to have a functional computer. Thankfully these days, power supplies aren't very expensive and they're easy to come by. Typically your system that comes out of a Dell or a Hewlett Packard is only gonna need around 450 to 500 watts. And those generally run around $35 for a halfway decent non-modular power supply. Now. What I would suggest, since you are putting your computer in this nice brand new case, if you have a little bit of extra money, definitely get some more wattage. It'll account for future upgrades because technology's never gonna stop and things go obsolete so quickly these days. So having a larger supply is gonna help you in the future. All right, so I had to take the sweater off. It's like 100 million degrees in this room. So I know that this computer is slightly different than what you typically find when it comes to computer cases, but most cases are gonna either have thumb screws or regular screws in the back to make sure that you can get both the side panels off. So you're gonna wanna take off the front and the side panels now. Okay, so now I've got both side panels of this case removed and I have the top panel because this, this one has like this humongous fan top panel. Wild. Typically what we do is we're gonna remove the graphics card first. The graphics card is gonna be put into the PCIe Express slot and it's usually screwed down to the back of the computer. You're gonna wanna get that out and you're gonna wanna take power out of it so that way when it comes time to removing the motherboard, that's not connected still.
Now, where the graphics card meets the PCIe Express slots, there is this little clip right here. When you insert your graphics card, this clip's gonna pop up and that's to help lock the graphics card into place. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and you're gonna push that down. That will release your graphics card so that you can go ahead and get it out. So if you don't know what a motherboard is, this is your motherboard. It's the piece that goes up against the back plate. What you wanna do now is make sure that you disconnect wires. You wanna get rid of all the wires that are connected to your, your motherboard to make sure that when you go ahead and unscrew it, that it comes out smooth. All right, now as you can see, we've removed all the cables that are connected to the motherboard. You wanna do this process slowly, okay? It's not a race. You wanna be gentle and delicate with your motherboard because if you break something on your motherboard, then you're buying a new motherboard. As you can see, this computer also has Wi-Fi put into it. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove this as well. You're gonna wanna inspect to make sure that there's nothing plugged into any one of these PCIe slots because they're always going to be screwed into your back plate here. And doing that, when you go to unscrew and take off your motherboard, it's not gonna come out. All right, coach, now it's time to unscrew the motherboard. You're gonna wanna start with the bottom screws and you're gonna wanna work your way up. That way, as you continue to take screws out, this doesn't fall and maybe snap your motherboard. You need to be very careful with this. Okay, so there's two screws left. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hold this CPU cooler to make sure that when I release those last two screws, the motherboard doesn't come flying out at me. So now that all your screws are gone, the motherboard should just release and come right out. Perfect. All right, so now your motherboard's gone. Now it just looks bare and empty. The only things that are usually left in a computer after you've gone ahead and removed the motherboard and the graphics card is gonna be your power supply and some additional fans or radiators if that's the kind of computer you have. To remove the power supply, it's very, very simple. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come back to the back of the case and you're gonna remove the four screws to hold the power supply in. You know it's where the power supply is when you can see where you connect power to the computer. So this computer looks a little different only because it sticks out for some reason because this is the weirdest case that has ever been made ever. Uh, you're ge it's generally gonna be flush up against the case to make it look aesthetically pleasing. Uh, this case is not. All right, All right now we're ready to pull this power supply out. Okay, so I got the uh, Octopus power supply out. This thing was really wedged in there. Let me see if I can get it in here. Hey, how you doing? So you're gonna also wanna make sure that your hard drives are disconnected. Hard drives have two cables, one's for power, and the other one is your SATA cable that connects to your motherboard. We've already disconnected the SATA cable from the motherboard, so now all we have to do is make sure that we remove it from your hard drive, that and the power supply cable. All right, so let's go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out of this case. Okay, so our computer is now completely disassembled. This case is dead empty and this is going to go into the garbage because this is humongous. I don't want it in the house. It takes up a bunch of space, more space than I want it to take up. So this is going away and we're gonna bring in our new case. This is the time, if you were going to clean your system, this is the time where you would go ahead and do that. Everything's out of it. This is the best time to disassemble everything 
and go ahead and clean it so that when you put it back into the system, it feels like it's brand new. We're not going to do that in this video. If you need to see how that's done, I have plenty of videos of me cleaning up really dirty computers and you can use that as a reference guide to help you learn how to clean a computer. Later on in the channel, I will put a full tutorial on how to disassemble and clean your computer. Today's is not about that. Today's is just putting it all your stuff into a new computer. So now you got your brand new case, where do you start? Well, you start at the same place you started when you disassembled your previous computer. You remove both side panels so that you fully expose the entire case so that you have more room to work in. There's one of two things that you're gonna to wanna to put into your case first. It's either gonna be your motherboard or it's gonna be your power supply. Generally, if it's a modular power supply, I will go ahead and I will count out the cables that I need. I will go ahead, plug them all in, and then I will go ahead and put the power supply in first, and then I will do the motherboard. But for this particular build, because our power supply has all the cables in it forever, there's not, they're not going anywhere, they're always gonna be there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the motherboard first, so that way I know how to route all the cables. Now I will admit, it's been a while since I have worked with a modern case and the power supply is on top. Generally what you're gonna find is the power supply is at the bottom of the case and people do that because heat rises and you want to try to expel heat from the case. But this, it, this will work just fine for us. Now you got your power supply in. I know that it looks a little wild because you've got a thousand cables. We're gonna mess with that in just a minute. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our SSD in. Generally with the new cases, they're gonna come with specific places to put your SSD. So that way you can keep everything nice and organized. So now that you've got this installed, you've got your SSD, the back panel is pretty much done, right? Until we need to get to cable management and that's always a real blast. Everyone loves cable management. Generally people will just shove everything in and then try to get the back panel on and then the back panel holds everything in in a gigantic mess. But you wanna to try to clean it up as much as you can. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on three cables. We're gonna focus on the motherboard power cable, the CPU power cable, and the GPU uh, cable. The reason being is that those are three very important cables. You want to go ahead and get your motherboard plugged in, your CPU plugged in, and then at least have the cable for your GPU in a location to where it's easy to plug in once you've installed your graphics card. So now we have our main cables plugged in. Our power to the motherboard, our power to the CPU, which is up here, and then we've got our two cables for our GPU right here. So let's go ahead and let's get the GPU in. And just like we had to when we took out the graphics card, you wanna make sure that this piece right here is pushed back. That means it is unlocked and it's ready for you to put in your graphics card. You wanna go ahead, slide it in, make sure it's lined up and give it a little push. And you should see that piece that you opened up in the corner here snap inward. So that means that it is now locked in. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna put your power cables in. That way you've got that taken care of. And don't worry, I know the cables look like a gigantic mess. We will fix that up when it comes time to cable manage. We are not quite there just yet. So what's left? Well, these cables are left. You're gonna have your USB. You're gonna have your USB 3.0. You're gonna have HD audio and the dreaded pins. This is, nobody likes this. Now this right here, is your HD audio. Your HD audio is, I mean, I don't think I've ever played with a board 
that it wasn't on the bottom left. So you're always gonna know that if you have HD audio connection that's needed, it's gonna be down here, bottom left. All right, now we've come to the part that nobody likes. It's these darn pins. See where it says LED, power switch, reset. That's letting you know where these pins go. So, so what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to correspond the correct pin to the correct position on the board. Now generally for most motherboards, the power pins are the same. This one was slightly different than what I see on most boards, but it still is not difficult to follow the instructions underneath the pins, right? But if you are concerned and, and you're worried about maybe messing it up, go ahead and Google the number on your board. There will be a guide on the correct way to put those pins and you can follow that in order to make sure that you've got your, your pins uh, installed correctly. So we are getting closer to throwing the panels on, putting some power in this thing and seeing if it'll turn on. Uh, but before we can do that, you wanna go ahead and you want to try to cable manage as best you can. So that way it, you still maintain that sleek look that you originally wanted because you did a case swap. So cables are pretty managed. It's not the greatest work I've ever done, but it's not bad at all. Definitely have enough space to put on your back panel. Everything has power in the front, you got your graphics card in, all the fans are hooked up, your motherboard's in, all the cables are connected correctly. Now all you gotta do is you've gotta put your panels on and, and pray. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We took everything out of one case and we threw it into another successfully. The only thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't tried to power on the system. You and me, we're gonna do this together uh, for the first time. I don't know if it's gonna power on, but let's check it out, all right? So let's make sure the power on the power supply is good. Here we go, fingers crossed. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty. Fantastic. All right. So it's really not as difficult as it may seem to change the look of the computer that you have. Whether it's an old Dell, old compact, you can throw it into a case that is aesthetically pleasing and it fits the environment that you're trying to create for your office or your work area or whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not done so already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Every time we get a new subscriber, it gets us closer to the goal of being able to give the computer that we work on every Friday out to somebody who might need one. Subscribers to this channel all have access to the giveaways that I'm going to start doing every single week once we get to the point where the channel is monetized and can make money. If you have not watched the giveaway video, hit the card up above or hit the link in the description below after the video is over so that you can watch the giveaway video so that you can qualify to win our giveaway computer. All future giveaways for this channel are going to be run through the PC Rehab Discord channel. The link for that will also be in the description below. You hit that, you can go ahead and join up. It's free, it's fun. People are talking in there all day long, sharing builds. Uh, it, it, is, it is pretty awesome to see. I have some fantastic mods. If you have any questions, please, you can go ahead and message one of them. They're more than happy to help you out. But that's gonna do it for me, guys. I hope that I was able to help somebody out. And if I didn't help anybody out, at least maybe I could have entertained you for a little while. Uh, but I definitely love that you guys are all here. The channel's growing so fast. You guys are awesome. I can't wait to see you in the next video. We don't have time-lapse footage for Wednesday's video, so I'm gonna have to come up with something fun to do for that video. But until then, I'll see ya.